Hey everybody, John Skiba here from the Consumer Warrior YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you three things that if you do, you are going to destroy your chances at getting a good settlement with your creditors. But if this is your first time here to my YouTube channel, please click subscribe, check on that little bell. That way you'll be notified each and every week when I put out new videos that'll help you deal with your serious debt problem. All right, let's talk about debt settlement. So if you have had the experience or if you have some debts that you're trying to, you know, you're, you've decided finally it's time. I got to get these things dealt with. I need to negotiate some type of settlement to get them done. That's a good thing. I always say the best thing you can do is take action, whether it's settlement, whether it's bankruptcy, whether it's fighting lawsuits, whatever it is, taking action is the number one thing you do need to do to get rid of these things. However, if you're trying to settle your debts, if you're trying to get them an account to take less than what's actually owed on it, there are three things you can do. There are going to make that a lot more difficult. Now I'm talking about advanced level collections, meaning that the debt is, this isn't something where you missed a payment or two and you're trying to negotiate directly like with the credit card company to get a result. We're talking about this thing hasn't been paid in years. It's likely been transferred to what we call a junk debt buyer or a third party debt collector and they're calling you and they're wanting payments or worse, they're suing you, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we're not, we're not just dabbling. <laughs> we're talking about debt that's seriously delinquent. Now, the, th the first thing that's going to make you your situation less likely to get a good settlement is by providing too much personal information to the collector. Now, they're already going to have a ton of information. You would be surprised and shocked at how much information about you is on the internet. And so they are able to get, they being debt collectors, creditors, they get reports that are largely based on the information from your credit report as far as maybe if you own a home, if you own vehicles, if you've just sold a home, if you just got a new job, all those types of things. They can get some limited banking information but they get quite a bit of information from you, um, but they don't have everything. And so it's possible to negotiate without giving them everything that they're asking for. Sometimes they'll do things like they'll say, well, well, we'll try to settle this debt. We may agree to a settlement, but uh, we need the last two uh, paycheck stubs to take a look at that and maybe your last bank statement so we can see what the balance of your account is, those types of things. All they're trying to do there is collect evidence so that they can garnish your pay or go after assets or uh, sweep your bank account don't give them that information. You don't need to provide them that type of uh, detail to be able to negotiate some type of settlement. Like I said, they already have a ton of information on you. And so it's really just something where you need to leave it at that. Too often people will give them the pay stubs, they'll give them the bank account information, and then all, you know, surprise, surprise, they're no longer willing to work with you because now they can sue you, get a judgment, and they know exactly where to go to garnish wages. They know exactly where to go to levy your bank accounts. So be careful with the information that you can provide them. You, you can be honest and up front, but that doesn't mean you have to give them every single thing that they're asking for because they already have a ton of information on you that they're making their settlement decisions on. Now, the second thing that you should not do that can really destroy your chances of getting a good settlement is waiting so long that they actually sue you and get a default judgment against you. Whether they've actually, you know, they haven't sued you, but they're threatening to, or they've sued you and then you just ignored it and they got a default judgment against you, you now have lost a lot of leverage when it comes to trying to negotiate a settlement. Once they have the judgment, they now have the power to do things like what we were talking about, wage garnishment, bank levy, they can lien your home. And so they're, you know, they've already gone through all the effort to jump through all the hoops that the court requires. Not only that, they may have incurred attorney's fees to do it. And so it can be a situation where now they're no longer willing to give you a very good deal on it. Whereas if you would have engaged them either prior to the lawsuit or the beginning of the lawsuit, you may have gotten something like a 20 to 30% settlement. They're likely going to want the whole thing over time, or they may give you like a 90 to a 95% settlement where they're just taking a little bit off the top uh, to be able to get get the thing resolved. The key is here is to don't not wait so long that a default judgment has been entered because you're going to lose a lot of leverage and really not be able to get it uh, squared away at that point. Now, the, the third one is kind of actually similar to the second one. It's right along those lines is don't wait. Uh, even if they have a judgment, don't wait until they get the garnishment in place. The third thing is if they have a garnishment in place, it's done. You, you're going to, your options really at that point are to either pay the judgment off in full through the wage garnishment or to file bankruptcy to stop the wage garnishment completely. If you wait so long that they get a garnishment in place, they're going to require 100% payment upfront, lump sum. They're not going to agree to a lower uh, settlement payment over time. Uh, you're going to have to pay the whole thing up front to get it done early. Otherwise, they're just going to keep taking that pay until you uh, get the, the judgment paid off in full. And the tough thing is that they have interest that is already accumulating and that'll continue to accumulate the entire time that the wage garnishment is. So, so don't wait too long. I guess that's kind of the overarching 
interesting theme of all of this. If you're trying to settle your debts, especially you know once they hit that six month mark and they get charged off, it's not a bad time to engage them to try to negotiate a settlement. Don't wait so long that a default judgment, a garnishment, those types of things are going to be completely fatal to getting any type of really good settlement. You're gonna end up paying almost the full balance. And the same thing is true if you provide them too much information, they may say, you know what, we're not gonna do this. We're just gonna sue you, get the judgment and cause all kinds of chaos then. So if you're in the state of Arizona and you need help with these types of issues, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is below. And if you're not in Arizona, I also have some tutorials and things like that that may be of help. You can click on and learn more about. Hopefully that helps you as you try to deal with your debt situation once and for all. Thanks for watching today.